We are now in the dock zone, and as you just saw, a total hip replacement can happen at any time. In Isaac's case, he was only 19 years old. Isaac's doctor, Michael Wilmink, and Dr. Kipling Sharp from Ortho, Arizona, join us to take it a step further. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. All right, so Dr. Sharp, let's talk a little bit about total hip replacements. This isn't something just happening in older people. That's correct. In fact, a lot of patients have come to me over the years, and they're crippled because they have such bad arthritis, and they've been struggling for years. And they said, you know, I saw a doctor years ago, and he said, wait till you're 65. And they didn't have to. That's probably the bottom line message. You can have misery now, so you can be happy when you're 65, or you can be happy now and get 20, 30 years out of a hip replacement. So I would encourage people that when you're so miserable that life is unpleasant, you move forward and get it. So Dr. Wilmink, let's talk about quality of life. Absolutely, when we look at, in medicine, the surgeries that we do, the two top ones are heart bypass surgery and total hip replacement in terms of, we look at those patients and their quality of life years that they have in terms of their quality of life and the number of years that they're gonna live afterwards. Hip replacement actually extends your life. You're able to get out, exercise, keep your heart healthy. So for me, it's one of my favorite surgeries to do for patients because I know they're going to be happy. They're going to come back, they get back to all those activities that they had to give up, which you were talking about, over the last several years. So I think that kind of leads us into our Facebook question that we have from our viewers. And so this is from Carolyn, and she said, my husband needs to have his right hip replaced but is having anxiety about the procedure, probably because he's only 53 and still wants to be, you know, have an active lifestyle. And though his pain is hindering that, what type of advice can you share with him, and maybe both of you can answer that. So, Dr. Sure. Sharp. Well, it's normal to have anxiety about surgery. I mean, if you're not anxious about having surgery, you're probably not here. It's, it's a scary thing. But hip replacement is one of the most successful operations performed in, in the history of surgery. The patients get great outcomes very consistently, very small percentage of complication rates. And if he's miserable at 54, if he is un, you know, unpleasant because he's in pain, if he's having trouble working, if he's having trouble having good family relationships because of the pain, there is absolutely no good reason to wait. He may find he waits to the point that he never gets it because he's so unhealthy he can't have it right away. Absolutely, and there's some patients that actually take it too far. They wear away bone and that compromises their outcome. But it's, you, you talk to all hip replacement patients and they'd wish they'd done it earlier. And they talk to their friends and their friends say they'd wish they'd done it earlier. So I think Patients should feel, feel very comfortable and safe these days about finding a surgeon who does a, a large number of these per year. I'd say you want to find somebody who does 50 to 100 per year, uh, is very comfortable with their technique of how they do it, and, and feel comfortable and confident going forward with the procedure. So Dr. Wilmink, there is a couple different procedures out there that people can choose from. Correct. Uh, when we do a hip replacement, whether you do it through an anterior approach or a posterior approach, it, it doesn't really matter. The important part is you get the components in where they need to be restore the patient's biology and their anatomy so they get up and they walk and it feels like their normal hip. Uh, more recently, over the past few years, there's been a trend for some surgeons to do an anterior approach, but it's really more finding a surgeon who's comfortable with their technique and letting them do the procedure. And Dr. Sharpie would agree with that. I agree. I, I think the most important thing is that you get a good surgeon who puts the components in well. How he gets them there, whether it's a small incision, a big incision, a front incision, a back incision, a side incision, that isn't going to matter a few months down the road. The long-term outcome is what matters. It's, is that hip going to be in there 20 or 30 years from now, still functioning and functioning well? And that's where the, the skill and experience of the surgeon and the frequency with which they do the procedure is important. So the biggest question you probably both get from your patients is the recovery process to be able to get back into their lifestyle, active lifestyle. Right. Everyone kind of wants a little you know, time capsule of what things look like going forward. And I typically tell my patients, at two weeks, you're generally off a walker or a cane. And typically, most patients at six weeks, I let them go back to full activities. And I don't restrict my patients. I do an anterior approach, and uh, I don't put any restrictions on them. I tell them I don't want you running or do triathlons. Yet again, I do have some patients out there who've sent me pictures of them crossing the finish line from a marathon or triathlon. But I send them back to full activities, and generally between six and 12 weeks, that's when their energy comes back. That's when they get back to their normal life. Mike, I think you hit on a, on a point that's important, that we have patients who do go out and do things like run, and the, the reason they shouldn't do that is because it wears the prosthesis out sooner. It isn't that they can't physically run, but we're concerned about the longevity of the prosthesis, I think. And that impact activity is what has the effect there. 
Well, we had some great information today, and I'd like to thank the doctors from Ortho Arizona for being with us in the Doc Zone. Join us each week as we tackle new topics on Joint Health.